So let's take a quick look at the syllabus and the things that we will be doing throughout the course here in NRSC 703, Translational Research and Evidence-Based Practice. So as you probably got from the instructor tab, I'm your instructor, Michael Barber, and if you haven't gone through that tab, go over and take a look at it because most of the information that you find here up front is a repeat of that. The only thing that's not a repeat of that is the online asynchronous aspect, but if you've already gone through the introductory video that's on the home screen, you've been given a bit of information about that, and you'll see that there's some more below. So in the syllabus, what you'll find is the course description is listed there, which is also listed on the main syllabus page, as are the specific course objectives. And you can see the five objectives that we're looking to use here, we're looking to cover here in this particular course, and as well the various competencies and objectives and learning objects that it is tied to within the, the larger field or within the larger institution. And as we move on to page two, you can see those in the field, so the Doctorate of Nursing Practice Essential Competencies here. You can see the nurse practitioner core competencies, and then you can see the interprofessional education competencies, all of which are linked back into the top, so you can see which objectives uh, fall with the different competencies. So the course, the first thing is, and obviously if you're here, you all have this, is a Canvas account that you need to make sure that you have so that you'll be able to access all of the material for the course. There are two textbooks for the course, and this is straight off of your textbook list. In addition, you'll see that there's a recommended text, which is the APA manual. Um, my recommendation is actually not to purchase the APA manual, as there's a lot of good online resources that will be available to you, and those will actually be linked into the course at the appropriate times so that you'll have all of that material. Now, one of the things that there's a little bit in here about course delivery, and there's a lot more about that in the video on the main home screen, so make sure you watch that video first before you move on to these other items. But essentially, this is an asynchronous course. What that means is that we do not meet in real time as a group, at least there are no planned meetings. But it also means that this is not a self-paced course. So you'll see at the end of this syllabus that there's a schedule that we're going to keep. So each week we are essentially going to complete certain activities, certain readings, certain assignments that are going to be due. And as you work your way through the course, you'll see and get into sort of a pattern with these as well. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't interact in real time at all. If the need arises, if there are certain areas where we feel that most or all of the students in the class uh, would like some specific instruction on, we can schedule uh, a synchronous Zoom session as a larger group or in smaller groups. So there might only be three or four students that are interested in a particular area and want to focus in upon that. So we can do those as we move forward and those will be ad hoc in nature. Now, there are times where the nursing program brings us all together, and I will make sure to be available during those times so that if there are things that we need to discuss as a group, we can set aside a bit of time for those. But the key thing to remember is that as a planned activity, we do not meet in real time, and also that this is not a self-paced course, so don't think that you can just sit down and do it all in the first four weeks, or that you can do nothing for the first five or six weeks and then do it all in the last four weeks. Um, it's a course that's designed to be done on a particular schedule, and you'll be held to that particular schedule as we go through. Uh, looking at the types of things that you're going to be doing in the course, the first thing is, is that there will be a series of discussions that you will be responsible for. Um, those will be ongoing and throughout the course, so there's going to be multiple ones of those, probably three to five in total. Um, in addition, you'll have an annotated bibliography that you'll produce. Uh, you'll produce an outline for literature review as well as submitting an initial sample so that I can get a chance to provide some feedback on your writing. 
Um, and once you've done that, then a few weeks later, you're going to submit. It's called a draft because as you work your way through the DNP program, you're going to continue to build upon this. So by the time you're actually finished the DNP program, the literature review that is in your eventual project will probably be 20, 25, 35 pages in length. What we're going to start here now is we're basically going to start that process. So essentially it's going to give you something that you can build upon. And then at the end of the course we're going to leave with an initial research plan. Now by initial research plan it's basically going to have a short description of your problem of practice. We're going to outline an appropriate research question or questions and then we're going to suggest a potential intervention that's based upon the literature that you reviewed to address that problem of practice. The grading is a fairly standard system. This actually comes directly from the standard format that we have for the School of Nursing. So this should be consistent with all of the other ones that you see. There's an attendance policy, not that we need one because obviously we don't have a class, so that doesn't apply to us. Um, written work should be APA style and should be double spaced. Uh, there's a policy on late work there, which you should review. Uh, there's also a policy there, or a description of classroom discourse in the environment, uh, the classroom environment that we want. And while we don't have a physical classroom, we want to make sure that within our online class that this, we, we maintain this decorum, if you will, uh, that's described here. So take a second to read through that. Then there's some standard policies here from Toro University, California. So if you are a student that has a disability that is listed under the Americans with Disabilities Act, please make sure that you reach out to Student Affairs and that you register with them so that any accommodations that uh, we need to do with the course between the Dean of Students, myself, and you will be able to figure out how we can address those concerns so that you have every opportunity to succeed in this course. There's an academic integrity statement which focuses largely upon plagiarism that you should take some time to read through because it's uh, fairly detailed and, and fairly lengthy, so uh, make sure you take a look through that. And then the final thing in the syllabus is the schedule of events. So you can see here we run on a weekly basis. It runs from Monday through Sunday and I've listed off the topics in a broad fashion that we're going to be covering as well as the specific readings for each of those weeks and in some cases I may end up supplementing some of these so while most of the weeks you'll see it's just chapters from your textbook as we go through the course and as I discover uh, new things we may end up adding particularly some journal articles to that depending on the week You'll see on the far column, those are the things that are due in that particular week. So uh, right now there's three planned discussions. There may be additional ones because you can see right now there's nothing listed for week two as well as nothing listed for week eight. So we'll see and play those by ear to see if we actually include anything in there or not. And you can see uh, for the most part there's something due every week. You'll see your annotated bibliography and your outline come pretty quick against each other. And then two weeks later is that initial sample that, so I can give you some feedback on your writing. Then we move in two weeks after that is when your draft of your complete document, at least your complete document based upon one semester's of understanding and work is due. And then finally that research plan. And you'll notice that the last week is not a full week. So this particular course only runs until the 11th so that final week is actually a three-day week so it runs from Monday through Wednesday now that may get extended out a bit I'm talking with the uh, folks within the program given the fact that this is an asynchronous course so it's not like we would meet on a Wednesday like all of the courses that actually have face-to-face uh, -face or Zoom meetings all meet on a Wednesday, so it makes sense for them to end on a Wednesday. 
I'm hoping that this will end up changing to the Sunday of that week and if that's the case I'll let you know in Canvas. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention at the top but I'll mention as we're going through you'll notice there's a couple of places where like at the end of the assignments where it talks about the potential need to modify or adapt things depending upon how the course is going and how you are uh, taking to the content. Similarly there is a statement up at the very top that talks about how while I will try to maintain what we have in the syllabus it is a general plan that we're going to follow and if we do need to make changes to that or to revise it in any way uh, that'll be done in the form of an announcement and then a revised version of the syllabus will be uploaded. So that takes us to the end of this introductory video focused upon the syllabus. If you have any questions please feel free to email me and I will do my best to answer them. It's important that we all start off on the same page when it comes to the course so if you have any questions at all about the syllabus or what's coming up please do email.